Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a new video series about how airlines try to save fuel to become more profitable and potentially make your ticket prices a little cheaper. In today's episode, we'll look at the top 10 ways how airplane manufacturers reduce unnecessary aerodynamic drag created by their planes, such as installing different light bulbs and covering their wings with shark skin. Yes, you've heard me right. Another video will focus on weight savings, and this will be a fun series. So fuel saving mode on, and let's get started. JetBlue 234, left golf, cross to your right, right Zulu. The tower for you will be 1191. First of all, a streamlined body. Now the first one is directly connected to the reduction of form drag. Having to meet the customer demands, like a decent cabin height and volume, while also trying to achieve the most favorable values for the drag coefficients has led to some very optimized fuselages over the years. Now, modern fuselages are often round or almost sort of pointy in the nose area and have a cone-shaped tail, all of which allows the air to flow smoothly around it without encountering abrupt changes in the geometry which could potentially disturb the flow. Now, in general aviation, you can often see that exposed parts, such as the wheels, have fairings, or sort of wheel pants, mounted onto the wheel struts to ensure a smoother flow around the otherwise disturbing geometry of the wheel mounts and the wheels themselves. Now, airliners usually do not deal with that problem since they have a retractable landing gear. Now, the landing gear usually represents a part that is built for rigidity, not for good aerodynamics. Therefore, it is immediately retracted once a positive climb rate is assured so that the airplane can accelerate without the additional drag the landing gear produces. Now, in the final approach phases, the landing gear is then extended again, obviously. In this phase, the produced drag can even be desired in order to further slow down the airplane's approach speed. Then we go to over the more obvious ones is number three, the winglets, sharklets, or wingtip fences. They all come in different shapes and sizes, reaching from the classic winglets on the Boeing 737, 757, and 767, to the sharklets as Airbus calls theirs on their new Airbus A320 Neo family. They can also be in the shape of a so-called wingtip fence, like you see them on older Airbus A320 family models and on the Airbus A380. Now, fun fact, the wingtip fence on the A380 is exactly the same as on the Airbus A320, just 1.7 times bigger. Others just look like wingtips that sort of got bent upwards, like on the Airbus A330 and the Boeing 747-400, and modern wingtips are fully incorporated into the wing design and are often sort of seamlessly sweeping upwards and to the back, such as on the Airbus A350, as well as on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and the 747-8, also known as the raked wingtip. Quiz question, which planes create the least induced drag or wake turbulence? And no, the answer is not the plane that's sitting on ground. Comment below, I'm looking forward to see your answers. Number four, flush rivets and bolts. Now the smoother a surface is, the less drag it produces. And while older airplane skins were full of exposed rivets and bolts, Modern airliners look super smooth and clean. And this is of course, thanks to the improvement in building techniques, as well as in the materials. Number five, the flap track fairings. Now, similar to the landing gear, the tracks to which the wing flaps are mounted and move back and forth or in and out, are not built to offer great aerodynamic characteristics. But since the whole flap structure is fixed into place underneath the wing and cannot be retracted and therefore made flush with the surface, there needs to be another solution to ensure a reduction in the drag they produce. Now, like the wheel covers on general aviation airplanes, they are therefore encased in fairings to ensure smooth airflow around them. Now, the shape of those flap track fairings is similar to the shape of the fuselage. I remember once flying with an Airbus A320 with an exposed flap track fairing, 
we had to add 2% to our trip fuel calculations. So taking 10 tons of trip fuel was an increase of 200 kilograms because of a missing fairing cover. Yes, it makes a difference. Number six, the aerodynamic air inlets. Standard air inlets pose a clear obstruction towards the airflow and just sort of redirecting or scoop the air in are not a desirable option for lowering the drag. Therefore, most air inlets that provide an air intake during flight are shaped in the form of a so-called National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics duct. Terrible name, I know. Its special shape allows for a sufficient amount of ram air to be taken in while reducing the form drag and even ensuring flow separation to a minimum. They are often used for generator cooling or air conditioning inlets. Number seven, aerodynamic covers for antennas. Now given their purpose and functions, most antennas need to be mounted on the airplane's outer surface, either on the roof or on the belly of the fuselage. Now since every additional object mounted onto the surface represents a disturbance of the airflow, the antennas need to be well covered. Now those covers are often sort of streamlined and even feature the shape of an airfoil to minimize the form drag. Now just look at this Wi-Fi antenna on this plane. Number eight, long, thin and streamlined outer sensors. Now similar to the antennas, many sensors need to be mounted onto the airplane's surface and are often directly pointing into the airflow. Now this, for example, applies to the pitot tubes, the angle of attack vanes and the temperature sensor, just to name a few. Now to pose the least amount of disturbance to the airflow, they are therefore designed to be very long and thin while making them incredibly streamlined at the same time. Number nine, flush strobe lights and beacon lights. Now the beacon light is a warning light that is constantly flashing in bright red from the moment the engines are started up until they are shut down again. Its purpose is to let everybody in the vicinity know that the area around the airplane right now is hazardous and must not be entered. Now in bad weather conditions, they also provide an additional way to identify an airplane and to avoid collisions. Therefore, it needs to be visible at a 360 degree radius and therefore sticks out of the surface quite a bit, which leads to a specific form drag. Now, Boeing recently came up with the idea to replace the common beacon light on their 737 models with flush lights that are mounted into the cabin window housing on both sides to ensure this 360 degree visibility. Good on you, Boeing. That's a smart solution. Number 10, surface coatings. Last but not least, the surface coatings with the most famous one known as shark skin. Shark skin is a thin film that represents a so-called biomimic technology. Now this means that this technology mimics concepts that can be found in nature. Now the specific one comes from the sharks, of which the skin has a special texture allowing for significant reduction in drag while sort of floating through the water. This shark skin technology artificially reproduces those microscopic riblets that are the secret of this concept and applies them to a surface film that can be used as a coating for airplanes. Now good old Lufthansa themselves even state that an application of this technology to the global fleet of long haul aircraft could save up to 5 million tons of kerosene a year. That sounds very promising. Nature is and always will be a step ahead of us. No doubt about that. <laughs> so as you see, there are many ways on how to reduce drag on your aircraft. The other big one is to save weight. So watch this video right here about the top 10 weight savings airlines apply to save fuel. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Perform a touch and go at my website, check, where you can get this beautiful <laughs> book of mine right here. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.